Hello and welcome. I'm Lisa Mitrokin and today we're drawing faces. So how do you go from an idea or a reference photo or looking at a life model to a believable picture on a page? It may seem overwhelming at first, but what I'm about to show you is life-changing. When I discovered face geometry back in the day, my mind was blown. Today, I use what I'm about to teach you in all of my portrait drawing. So grab some paper and let's get started. Believe it or not, all human faces share the same basic geometry. Let me show you. I start with a freehand circle and that jaw attachment bit on the bottom. Notice that I have a center line that's very important to maintain symmetry. You can draw one or make a crease in your page or keep an imaginary center line, whatever works for you. And here comes the fun geometry bit. Let's make the very top and the very bottom points A and B and place a horizontal line roughly in the middle. You can just eyeball it. We'll call it point C. It's your center. Now let's divide the distance between C and B in half. We'll call it point D. How about taking the distance between D and B and cutting that in half as well? And it doesn't matter what you call these points, I'm just labeling them for the ease of reference. Now I will place two circles on either side of the center point on the center line. Each circle is more or less halfway between the center and the edge of the face. This can vary. These will be our eyeballs. They can be set closer or further apart depending on the kind of face that you are drawing, but they must be an equal distance from the center. That's important. Now a small circle right over D, this will be our nose tip. And another larger circle between E and B, this will be the chin. Oh yeah, let's throw one more halfway point in there. Let's take the distance between D and E and make F and put a line through it. This is where the mouth will go. Crazy how everything is half of a half of a half, right? And all of it happens on the lower half of the entire head. We tend to think that the face takes up most of the head because it's the most important part and the part that we interact with the most. But the reality of it is that the face is really just on the bottom half of the head. Crazy. Now, I like to identify the centers of the eyeballs. I make these little crosshairs here, and then I trail them down until they intersect the line of the mouth. The corners of the mouth on any face, with any face proportions, will always be directly under the pupils of the eyes. Another freaky geometrical law of the human face. Always. And of course, we're talking about a perfectly still face with no emotional expression a face in a relaxed and neutral state. And now we can start sketching the elements. Let's add some eyes, a nose, some eyebrows, some lips, always staying within our geometrical guidelines, but starting to add a little bit of character. We can decide how open or squinty the eyes are, how wide or narrow the nose is, how full or thin the lips are, but remember, no emotion yet. This is just the basic face structure study. We can define the jawline and add some ears, a neck, and a hairline, and start adding some shading here and there. A little more. Now you can start shaping your character. But don't start with the details of the eyes or the lips. It all starts with the same basic geometry. If you don't have your proportions down, no amount of detail will make the character look realistic. This very basic half of a half of a half with the corners of the mouth under the pupils layout is true for every single face on the planet. Now, this look, the face staring directly at you, it's quite boring. It's a mugshot. A head can turn to the left all the way to 90 degrees and it can turn to the right with every possible angle in between. It can look up and to the side, it can look down and to the side. All of these are far more interesting angles than the mugshot. These are just a few examples that I sketched for you. And among them, these are the ones that are the most flattering. Today, I will draw a character in this position, the three-quarter view. So where do you even begin? I always start with a very light freehand sketch of the shape of the face, marking the lines where the eyes will sit, 
marking the general location of the nose and the mouth. These are the very basic elements. If I don't place them correctly according to the geometry that I just taught you, there's really no point in continuing. It's ironic, really, that the part of the drawing that's the most important takes just a few seconds, while the rest of it takes hours. I'm working with fine charcoal. This stuff is great for sketching and rough drawing. It's very powdery and very easy to manipulate on the page. Notice that I'm not even considering final detail yet. I'm working with very thick black lines, very sloppy, very rough, just to sketch in my character's features. I find that the biggest problem that beginner artists make is jumping straight to the fun part and then wondering why the whole thing just looks somehow wrong. I see so many perfectly drawn eyes and eyebrows and then when the drawing continues, the whole thing is just off. And it doesn't take much for the brain to register that something's wrong either. A few degrees off in the wrong direction on the corner of the mouth or the height of the eyeball on the face and we no longer register the illusion of reality, but rather just see a doodle on a page. You don't start building a house by carving little details on the window frames, do you? You start with a blueprint and then you lay out the foundation and then the main load bearing walls and so on. It's the same thing with drawing. I will ultimately take my character this far. I like to leave a little bit of drawing and painting texture in there and not polish it all the way to photorealism, but I like to take it just close enough to photorealism that if you walk by it and see it from a distance, it could pass for a photo. I use my fingers a lot with charcoal. This is practically a finger painting. It's more like sculpting than drawing at this stage. I established my basic shape with the sketch lines, but now I'm molding the character and giving her these little micro expressions that will ultimately develop into a personality. I love white charcoal. I'm completely addicted to this stuff. It's so great. And it's not even charcoal at all. It's some kind of an unholy mix of chalk and synthetic fairy dust. Whatever it is, it gets the job done. It's very dense and not powdery at all, so I can't really finger paint with it the way that I do with willow charcoals, but I can use Q-tips. Sometimes I start with white, sometimes I start with black. It really doesn't matter because they work so well together. I guess for me, it just depends on the overall look and what's more important to establish first. For instance, if I'm doing something with really over-the-top dramatic lighting, I will probably start with white and then fill in the rest with black. But if I'm doing just the regular daylight lighting, I usually start with the black shadows. Once I have all the light and shadow established, I go over the entire thing with a finer tool. I love my charcoal pencils. I can sharpen them to absurdity and get that tiny, tiny fine detail, especially in the eyes. And I go back and forth between black and white just to balance things out. White charcoal comes in pencil form too, by the way. So if you prefer that, it's out there on the market. I have all my materials listed in the video description, so you can check that out after the show. I prefer the stick form though, because I can sharpen it just like I would a pencil and it gets the job done. Notice that at this point, there are no outlines left at all. And I never even used an eraser. Remember how thick those black lines were in the beginning? Gone, completely. Charcoal is magical. I also love mixing media. I can keep working on this in charcoal, fine tuning my details with sharper tools. I can switch to pastels or even paint, or I can photograph this and take this to a digital painting program. And then there's no limit to what I can do with this. But finalizing a portrait is a topic for another lesson. For today, stick with charcoal, get messy, but only once you've established that geometrical foundation. And let me know how it goes. I love to see what you guys make as well. Come join me in my Facebook group, Tom, The Art of Lisa Mitrokin, and post your drawings. Thank you so much for watching, for those thumbs up that I'm sure you gave me, and for subscribing to my channel. You guys make this channel and these videos possible, so keep it up. Tell all your friends, let's bring more people here, and I'll see you again very soon. Bye!